We're going to do two things today. Um, well, I don't know. Depends how you count them. Our two main topics are, first of all, doing sort of the header detail bit. And we'll, we'll talk about what I mean by that, and we'll implement an example. And you, you should already know everything you need to to do this. It's just a matter of putting the pieces together. So we'll spend a, a minute doing that. And then we'll start getting to the stuff that you need to know to actually update the database. That is, do uh, inserts, updates, and deletes. Um, we'll focus today on updates and deletes, and we'll save inserts for another day. Um, first of all, um, if you remember from last time, we had a uh, code that looked at an employee, or, or that allowed us to search by some criteria, pull up an employee, and see all the detail for that employee. Uh, when I talk about a header detail, what I mean is uh, essentially, in a nutshell, um, the implementation of a, of a, or the representation of a, of a one-to-many relationship on, on a page. Um, in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to add a table for, um, let's say, check received for the employee. All right? And we will create a... Um, we will create a page that will show the employee information on the top and the check received on the bottom. So that's what I mean by header detail. So anytime you have a one to many that you're representing on a page, you could call this the header and this the detail. You know, you see this all the time. You know, if you talk about the, the, the students and the courses that they're taking, the professors and the courses that they're teaching, an order and the items that are on the order, an employee and the paychecks that they've received. You know, these are all examples of you show the one information and you show all the related rows here. Now, um, we're going to start off just doing read only and then we'll get into um, the ability to, to add, uh, insert, update, and change. All right? So that's what we'll be doing over, over the next while. Now, as far as doing this on the page, The visual side of it should be fairly straightforward. We're going to have, on the top of the page, a details view. And a grid view. The details view is because we want to show the header. We want to show the one. So typically, you use a details view for that, because that shows all the columns from one particular entity. Or we can use it to show all the columns or at the very least, all the columns that we want to see for one particular entity. To show multiple rows, we're talking about a list or a grid. So we'll have a details view on top, a grid view on the bottom. Now the question comes, how many data sources do we need? How many data sources do you think we need here? And there's probably only two reasonable answers. Can someone tell me what the two reasonable answers are? One or two, right? You know you you know you know you need more than you know that, that negative SQL data sources is absurd, so it couldn't be a negative number. <laughs> you know that uh, zero probably isn't the right answer. And you know three or more probably isn't the right answer. And you know there's no fractional data sources. So we can by our immense powers of logic reason that there's either one or two. Which do you think we need? Do we need one SQL data source or do we need two? SQL data sources. Well, this is similar work that we did to our last lab. Okay. And I used two. Okay. I got one with printed details you, on. You can get away with one. You can get away with one, but it's probably not a good idea. All right? Especially when we start getting into insert, updating, and deleting, and all that. I guess my key is, is you know, point to the thing on the screen and describe it in words. And if it's the same thing, then you need one data source. If, it, if your descriptions are different, then you need two. So for example, if I was doing this one, I'd say, I want to see all the information about an employee. I want to see all the paychecks that the employee has received. That's two different things. All, right? all the general information about an employee, all the paychecks that that employee has received. Those are, those are two different things conceptually. So. Um, 
it, it, it would make sense to do that. Could you hammer one data source to create that? Maybe, but it, it wouldn't be worth uh, the effort in my mind. It wouldn't be worth the trouble. And it will become especially problematic when we go to insert, update, and, and uh, delete. So let's go and let's look at this. And let's add, I think we're going to have to add the table. I don't think the table exists yet. So we'll add the table for paychecks for checks. And then we will do our one to many. So I'll go in here and add a table. Anything elegant here? I'll go in and say create table. Go into design view. We'll call this the check table. It is important, by the way, to make these columns the type that they actually are. It's important, really, to set all the properties for these fields, all the attributes for them. Like, I probably should go back and make the check date amount an employee number a required field, all right? because we wouldn't want to be able to enter one without having one of those fields. All right? That is a form of a constraint. Right? to say that it's required or to say that it's numeric or, or whatever. is a form of a constraint. Remember, we want to implement as many constraints as possible on the database level because if it's implemented on the database level, we know it will always take effect. You can't get data in, up, down, or sideways that violates those constraints. All right, I'm going to go in now and... Put in, oh, I should make it a foreign key too. I forgot to do that. Let's go and make it a foreign key. All right. Now we can go in and add a couple of checks for some people. Let's see what our employee numbers are. One, two, th one through five. Let's go and put in. So now I'm going to go into my .NET project and open my website, which I thought I had already done.
this shows a detail about one employee. So I can now add the paychecks. And again, conceptually, this is a different piece of data. Right? This is the basic information about an employee, all the checks that the employee has received. Another way to look at it is look at sort of the cardinality of the data. Uh, in other words, on this page, there's going to be one of these. right? There's going to be potentially a bunch of checks. So that also implies that it's coming from two different places. So let's go in and create our SQL data source and I'll configure it to say pull everything from the check table Oops. now we'll do it this way pull everything from the check table where How do I want to pull it up? I want to pull it up based, by, based on the employee ID. All right? So I'll say where employee ID equals, and what's the source? Well, it's going to be from the query string, right? Um, do I remember the name of the field? I think it was AMP ID. We'll try that out. All right? And remember, this isn't the name of the field in the database. This is the name of the field that we're passing on the query string. So I'll go and say AMP. ID. When you're all done with that, you got to click Add. I can then go sort it by date if I want to. And I can finish. Now I'll go and put a grid view on. A grid view because, again, there could be potentially more than one check for a person. And I'll go and choose my data source. And I should be ready for business. Now, I forget what page links to this one. So I'm going to spend a minute poking around. Okay, that's the one. All right, department search. So I'll set department search as my start page. That way we don't have to worry about where we're coming from. All right, I'll go and run this. There's Mike. Mike's in accounting, so we'll leave that, and I'll click on Mike. And notice I guessed right with employee ID. I was almost hoping I was guessing wrong so I could talk about that. Right? The idea, again, is that it's pulling up the che checks on the same basis as pulling up the detail. And in this case, the way that we're doing it is we're passing to this page a field on the query string called EMP ID. All right. If I did this and it didn't pull up the checks for that employee, the first thing I would do is go back and check to make sure that I got the query string name right, the field on the query string right. Because, again, if I was looking for, let's say, EID instead, instead of EMP ID, uh, since there's no EID on the query string, nothing would come up because it would plug in nothing as a parameter and therefore it would not retrieve any of the checks. But because I got it right, um, it pulled up the checks for that person. So then we have a header detail. All right. Yay. Any questions? All right. Let's go and... Let's look at this department. Page. I want to see what's on this page. Okay. We're going to work with this page. Alright. So I'll make this guy the start page now. Right now we go and run it and shows us a list of the departments. Alright. Now, one thing that we can do is that we can do deletes and inserts, I'm sorry, deletes and edits through a grid view. So for example, we could click on one of the departments
departments and delete that department from the database. All right. The other thing we could do is we could, we could change it. For example, if we wanted to change IT to information technologies, we could click on it, edit it, and go and change it. All right. I'm going to look for a second at the database. I want to check something out. Good. I have to find the foreign key there. All right. So how do we delete it? As you might imagine, just for us to display the data from the table, we had two things going on. We had our grid view, which is the visual um, aspect of it. And we had our SQL data source, which is sort of the behind the scenes, the database operations for it. So if we're talking about changing this grid view to allow edits and deletions, it makes sense that the changes we have to make have to be in two places. Right? We somehow have to change the, the grid view to allow deletions and edits, because right now the grid view doesn't allow that. So we have to make some change to the user interface to allow edits and deletions. We also have to change the SQL data source. Because right now, the SQL data source doesn't know anything about deletes and updates. All right? So let's look at this. All right? Right now, there's nothing on here that says enable, insert, and updating and deleting. The reason for that is because you first have to set the SQL to allow for inserts, updates, and deletes. I keep saying inserts. Inserts are allowed out of details view. Inserts are not allowed on a grid view. So if you hear me say insert, update, and delete when I'm talking about a grid view, mentally filter out the word inset, uh, insert and just say update and delete. All right. So I'm going to go in here. And we're going to talk about, we're first going to do the delete statement, because the delete statement is like the easiest SQL statement. All right? How do you delete from a table? Well, something like this. If I want to delete from the department table, I could do something like this. Delete from department, and then I'm going to add something on the end. What do you suppose I'm going to add on the end? A where clause? Exactly. We're going to add a where clause on the end. Because remember, how does SQL work? SQL works at if you don't specify what you're performing the operation on, it assumes you want to do it on all. So if I executed that statement, delete from department, it would try to delete everything from the database. All right, or let me rephrase that. It would try to delete every row from the department table. So I have to specify a where clause. Now, what do you think I'm going to put in the where clause? I'm going to say where something equals something, right? where something equals something. Well, the first something I'm going to put in is going to be the department ID. Now, in your typical web application, you want to delete like a row at a time, right? I don't want to delete all departments. I want to delete the specific department that I click on. So therefore, most often in a web application, you're going to delete based on the primary key. Because you want to get rid of the one that you want to get rid of. You don't want to get rid of five that you want to get rid of. You just want to get rid of the one. How do you identify uh, a row in the database to point to and say, this is the one I want to do something with? Well, you do it um, via the primary key. Now, what's the value for primary key? I don't know. All right? We might want to delete where the ID equals 1, or where the ID equals 10, 
or anything like that. So, what do we do? We put a question mark in there, right? Just like we've done before. That question mark represents a placeholder that's going to get filled in at runtime. So, I'm going to go here in my SQL data source. Take two. My SQL data source, configure data source, next. I'm going to move from here, and I'm going to go to specify custom SQL statement. I don't have to do this, but I'm doing this just to demonstrate. Now notice we get an update, an insert, and a delete. All right. So I can go in the delete section, and I can put in the instruction that I've identified as being what I want to use to delete. Delete from department where department ID equals question mark. All right. Almost all your delete statements are going to look a lot like this. Yes? Um, what did you do when you opened it? Is that your... Are you modifying the SQL data source? I, I missed it. Yes, I'm here. modifying the SQL data source. Originally it came up like this. I went in and said I want to specify a custom SQL statement, all right, because I wanted to go in and do that. But is this the source that's actually you're printing out the information from? Yeah. Or is this another source? No, this is the same SQL data source. This is just something else we want to do with this data source. All right, let's rewind and go back to the beginning. Here, here's a, here's a page with a SQL data source and, and the, the associated grid view. Go here. Configure data source. All right. Switch that to specify custom SQL statement. Now, again, notice I see the SQL statement that was there from before, and I have these tabs, and I can click on the delete tab, and I can insert the SQL statement for the delete. Does that mean you no longer had to have the data that you got from the select? No. This is, no, this is an additional. This is additional thing. Oh. There's a lot of things you can do with the grid view, right? You can display data, you can delete data, you can modify data, all right? And be behind each operation, there's a SQL statement. Oh. So we'll go in later and put in an update statement, all right? Now it's not going to take the place of the select statement, it's not going to take the place of the delete statement, but it will tell the data source how to behave when you want to go and do an update. So, yeah, different, different SQL statements behind each operation that, that a uh, SQL data source can do. All right, I click Finish. I will say yes in this case. I probably didn't have to because I um, really didn't change anything. It just got antsy because I changed the SQL. All right, now, lo and behold, one of the options on the grid view is to enable deleting. All right. Enable deleting. And I can go in and click on that. And now all of a sudden I have a column that says delete with a link. All right. Let's go in and let's put some data in here that we can delete. Because I don't want to delete the ones that are already there. So I'll go in and add some dummy departments. So I added three dummy ones so I can delete. All right. Now I go and view this page, and it'll show me all my departments. All right, including the ones I just added. Now I click delete, and it's gone. All right. Click delete again. It's gone. Click delete. It's gone. Now. 
Those are dummy ones that I just added in. What do you suppose is going to happen if I try to delete one of the departments that has people assigned to it? Pardon me? It'll break. It'll break somehow. It'll do something wrong, probably. All right. So let's go and try to delete accounting. So I'm not mistaken, there's a couple employees in accounting. Ooh. The record cannot be deleted or changed because the table employee includes related records. So I get an error, and what's more, I get a very ugly looking error message. You don't want your user seeing this. In fact, if we were doing this uh, in an actual application, and this, you know, remember, I'm running off the development server this on my own machine. That's why I get this error that sort of tells me exactly what's going on. In a production environment, you wouldn't want to divulge information like what the name of your tables are, because that would potentially help hackers. All right? So therefore, the error message, if this was a production environment, would be a lot more vague and wouldn't say exactly what went wrong. At any rate, whether we're talking about this sort of error message or the even uglier error messages, these are not the kind of error messages we want to put up in front of users. All right? So one of our tasks is going to be to clean up the error message and to give us a, a better error message. Now, the other task I would say is we probably, since we're deleting, we want to confirm that deletion and not just delete at the instant they say yes. All right? Or delete. We want them to answer, are you sure? And then click yes. So the two things that we want to add to this are we want to add some kind of error trapping so that we can put up a more understandable error message. All right? The other thing that we want to do is we want to put up a message confirming the delete. All right? We'll try to get through at least that part of it today. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll just file this away in our mind and know that we have to do it later. All right? Let's do this so that, that way we can do the update as well. Then after we do the update, then we'll go back and, and clean up some of these loose ends. Before we do that, though, I want to make sure you understand why we're getting an error in the first place. We're getting an error in the first place because when you define a foreign key, you specify whether there are cascading deletes or not. Notice cascade update, cascade delete. I did not check cascade delete. What does cascade delete mean? It means when you have a parent-child relationship, in this case the department is sort of the parent of the employee table, when you have a parent-child relationship, if you delete the parent, do you want to delete the child underneath it? And that depends on the particular business problem that you're talking about. Your two choices in access are to either cascade delete, that is, get rid of all the related records to, or to restrict deletion and not allow deletion. So the question is, if I delete a department, do I also want to delete the employees that are in that department? And the answer is probably not. All right? I mean, if we delete a department, we don't necessarily want to get rid of all the employees that are in it. We might transfer the employees to another department or whatever. So therefore, we did not set cascade delete. We set restrict delete. And via that, if we go and try to delete a department and there are employees associated with that department, then we won't be allowed to delete it. So that's why we're getting an error in this case. Let's just file that information away for a minute, though, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go and do the update, and then we'll come back and, and clean up some of these issues. All right. The update statement. That's a delete statement. The update statement looks something like this. Update 